Hi guys, Grant from beyondbeaver.com where I teach you how to build websites ridiculously quick. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how you can build the blog sidebar uh, using Beaver Builder. Uh, why you'd want to do that um, is if you are say a web agency um, and your clients are editing their website using Beaver Builder on their front end, you don't really want to have them go to the back end into the widgets area and then start dragging the widgets in. You sort of want to make sure that the way that they're editing, editing their website is the same throughout, you know, for consistency uh, to minimize both your support and to help them um, use their website. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, first using the Beaver Builder theme here. This is what we're going to start off with. So this is the blog page uh, on my demo site here. So first we're going to turn on the sidebar and then we're going to build the sidebar uh, using Beaver Builder. And then we're going to uh, inject the Beaver Builder layout that we build into the sidebar using a text widget and the Beaver Builder shortcode. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to turn on the sidebar if it's not already turned on. So uh, if you're using the Beaver Builder theme, you're going to want to go uh, either to your WordPress dashboard and then Appearance Customize. Or from your blog page, you can just click on Customize up on the top left. From here, you want to go to content, uh, blog layout, sidebar position. You want to turn that on, so left or right. I like the right hand side. I like the right hand side being uh, we read left to right. I like people to see my blog post first, and then if they do want to filter, they can look on the right and filter the content they're seeing. So after turning that on, you can see it's on the right hand side, and we're going to click save. And we're going to exit out the WordPress customizer. So currently, uh, by default, our blog sidebar, this is widgets, okay? So if we go back to our WordPress dashboard, then go to Appearance Widgets, you can see the primary sidebar is Search, Post Archives, and the Categories. And that's exactly what we have back on our blog page here. So Search, Archives, and Categories. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to replace all these widgets with, like, like I said, the Beaver Builder uh, shortcode to inject a layout. So firstly, we're going to want to uh, build the blog sidebar using Beaver Builder. To do that, we're going to use templates. And the first thing you're going to need to do is under Settings, Page Builder, go to Templates, and make sure Enable Admin Templates is checked. So that's already checked because I use that by default. Well, let's just disable that. And what you'll notice is in my menu on the left hand side, there's no menu item that says templates. Now, if I enable that, enable templates admin and click save template setting, we get a new uh, WordPress dashboard menu item and it says templates over here. So let's click on that. So templates, all templates. And templates being uh, your saved rows um, and your save, yeah, your saved rows uh, and your saved page layouts. Um, a quick tip: so those things, a, a saved row and a saved layout in Beaver Builder, they're actually a post type. So if you look up here, just say we go to, um, just say we go to posts, and we go to pages. By default, uh, it's querying the post post type. So in the URL, there's no. Um, there's no post type declaration, but over here, if we go to pages, post type equals page. So when you click on a, a post type um, in the WordPress dashboard, it actually adds the post type up in the URL. And if we go back to the templates, post type equals fl hyphen builder hyphen template. So that's just a that's just something to know that these are actually post types. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new post, so a new template, a new Beaver Builder template for our blog sidebar. So I like to call it sidebar blog, but you can call it whatever you want, and then click, I click publish. Let's launch the page builder to build our sidebar. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys something. Just say we, uh, we add a column, so one column, you only, your sidebar is narrow, you don't wanna have two columns. You, there might be some exceptions. Generally, it's gonna be so narrow, it's just gonna be one solid uh, row of content. So we'll add that row. Um, and then what we want to do, let's just add some dummy data. So uh, a blog conversions, you're probably going to want to have a newsletter subscriber. And I'm just going to choose email. You'd obviously connect that to uh, whatever you're going to be using. 
Test account. Yep, that all looks good. Now notice how we're building. We're using the full width of the page. But when we do put that into our blog sidebar, we've only got a, a narrower bit of room. What I like to do, so uh, with the Beaver, Beaver Builder theme, you can actually specify how wide your sidebar is. Um, but what I usually do is I'll come in here and I'll inspect elements. So right click on the sidebar area and click inspect on Chrome. Uh, or whatever the, the appropriate is for uh, your browser. And then within FL-sidebar, I just go uh, to a widget and I see the width. So I can see this is 294 pixels wide. Can you see that just over here? I can't actually show you guys because when I move my mouth, it comes over. But it says 294 by uh, 98 pixels. So what that means to me is I want to be designing my blog sidebar at 294 pixels. So if we go back to our template where we're editing it, there it is. So what I do is I give this row we're editing a CSS class and then I give it a max width so it pulls it in when we're editing. So when we're editing the blog sidebar it's the same width as the front end and that way we can sort of be a bit more precise with our design. So to add a class to do that, to do that little thing, hover on the row and click the wrench. Go to the advanced tab and add a CSS class. So I call it uh, FL hyphen sidebar to be consistent and then wrap. Let's save that. And the power of Beaver Builder is we can add CSS to just this template. So that means, so if we add under tools, layout CSS JavaScript, so that means this CSS will only be loaded on pages that uh, this template is in. So that's good because we're only gonna be outputting this on the blog pages with this sidebar. And that means the CSS isn't gonna load when we just go, for instance, to a, uh, to a page. So let's go layout CSS. So let's do dot, our class name that we just gave the row. Max width, 294 pixels. And you can see that's going to bring it into the width of our sidebar. We want to click save. Now, if we go back to the, um, the default sidebar, you'll see that it actually has uh, padding on it. So you could remove that with CSS and then add the padding uh, to your actual template. I don't like to override the CSS. It's just a bit more, a bit more work. So what I do is I leave the padding uh, that comes default on the uh, Beaver Builder blog sidebar. And I just remove all the padding from here, from the left and the right. So I'll edit the row. Actually, what I'll do, I'll show you guys uh, how this outputs by default when we do add it here so that you can see what I mean by the, the malt, the, it's going to double up on padding and then we'll go back and remove it. So we're going to uh, just build our sidebar. I won't, I won't show you guys. I'll just quickly do it. Okay, so that's our sidebar that I've just quickly designed. And then I'm going to click done and publish changes. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to insert this into our blog sidebar. Now the next step is to insert this into the blog sidebar. And to do that, we're going to use the Beaver Builder shortcode. So let's go to our dashboard, then appearance widgets, and then the blog sidebar is the primary sidebar. So these are the existing widgets that are in there. So let's just remove these. we're going to add in a text widget. Now the Beaver Builder shortcode is fl underscore builder underscore insert underscore layout. And where I always use a slug because if you're just say you set up a master install and you have this blog sidebar set up for all your different client websites, uh, each time you clone WordPress or you add more posts and stuff, that ID might change, uh, whereas a slug won't. So you always, I always use a slug. So slug equals, and to get the slug of that blog sidebar, go to templates and the blog sidebar and just click view. And you can see in the URL that last little bit, fl hyphen builder hyphen template, the slug is this part after it. So copy that and put it into the slug here. So fl underscore builder underscore insert underscore layout slug equals our sidebar blog and click save. Now if we preview our blog, notice how the blog sidebar is not showing there. It should, but the reason that it's not is because our theme isn't set up to automatically allow shortcodes and text widgets. 
Okay, so I mean, I, I, I feel like that should be default uh, WordPress. I always use it, but it's not. So we need to add a function. So what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna go to your functions.php file uh, in your active uh, WordPress theme and then add this function here. So allow short codes and text widgets. Add filter widget underscore text do underscore shortcode. So yeah, this will allow us to run, to execute. This allows shortcodes to execute within text widgets. And we're gonna save those changes. And we're gonna refresh our blog and there it is. Now notice how it's quite narrow and we still have a bit of room. If we inspect element, and we go to the FL hyphen sidebar, see how the sidebar has padding? But then if we come down, there's more padding here in the actual row. So that's double the padding. You probably don't want that and that's why I always go in to my template. So again, go to templates and then edit the blog sidebar using Beaver Builder. And then I come in here and for the row, I turn off the padding. So because it's got 20 pixels around by default in my, in my install. Let's just remove the left and right and click save. Done, publish changes. And then if we go back and refresh our blog, so it extends the whole way now. And if we inspect element and check out this, see it's at 290, 294 pixels that we had planned it before. So there you go. And I mean, you might want that to line up as well. So you could just go back and edit the sidebar and then edit the row again, and then just turn off the top and bottom. Adding. That would depend on the, the, um, the theme you're using and the sort of design you're going for. Sometimes I do like my sidebar to sit a bit lower. So done, publish. And then we'll go back to here and we're going to refresh this. And there you go, that's lining up completely. And the beauty about this is that you and your clients, uh, so you get to use the Beaver Builder modules to build the sidebar, which is powerful, the call, the call out, um, the subscribe, all that sort of stuff that you wouldn't be able to use if you were just using WordPress widgets. So for you, that's your benefit. And for your clients, they're only using Beaver Builder to edit their, their uh, website. So I mean, they use Beaver Builder to edit, their, uh, to edit their pages and they use Beaver Builder to edit their blog sidebar, which makes sense. And uh, you know, you don't wanna have your client and you're saying, oh, build your pages with this. To build your sidebar, you need to use widgets. To edit your posts, you need to use the WordPress editor. It just, it just gets, uh, it's a bit cumbersome. Um, so yeah, so at least you're moving more towards everything is being done with Beaver Builder's drag and drop system. So that's it. Uh, I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, what you can do, if, if you do want some more tutorials, go to beyondbeaver.com uh, and join the mailing list. I email these out uh, once a week. I'm trying to aim for two new videos a week uh, plus two new written blog posts. Uh, that seems to be uh, the amount or that I'm pushing out a week. And yeah, I, I'm teaching a lot of blog customizations with Beaver Builder and, uh, and also the Beaver Builder theme. Uh, already you can see posts where I add an avatar uh, to the blog and where on individual blog posts, you know, a nice fancy header area like this with your avatar. Um, and you have, you know, a background image when you scroll it fades out. So yeah, all that stuff. I've already got a lot of blog customi customizations on my uh, beyondbeaver.com website. Thank you. And also don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn.